This is the instructional how-to video for Mariano Reeves. Start off up front with your generator box. You'll open the generator compartment. Once you have your generator in place on your platform, platform, this leg will mount to the front after you unzip tie and use this pin for being able to hold the leg in place. This will slide out once you get about 10% uh, out. You'll put your leg in place and then pull your generator tray all the way out making sure that you have the weight taken off of the front of the platform. Uh, that's why the drop leg is in place. Definitely make sure you use it. Uh, might have to put some blocks of wood underneath, uh, underneath the foot if it is uh, wet ground. While we're here on the driver's side, we have the waste drain valve for the 50 gallon waste tank. You can hook your hose up, whether it be a three inch hose or you can hook up a three quarter inch hose. Once your hose is hooked up, simply pull the gate valve and the water will drain out. Once finished, make sure you shut the gate valve and put the cap back on in place for transport. Up front we have your 100 pound propane cage with a tank installed. Your tank is empty, but our tank is live. We'll go over a demonstration for the propane here in just a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the access door. Run your power cord through this cable hatch, just like so. We are going to be plugging into our building power. Once you have the cable in place, you can shut the cable hatch door down like so. I'm going to fit in there nice and snug. Again, we have this plugged into our building power for testing purposes. You have your city water fill box. This is for filling the fresh water tank. It's a non-pressurized side. Uh, so just make sure you put your food grade water hose into this spout and that will be able to fill the fresh water tank through this hose as you see here. If you are going to be provided pressurized water, you can hook up your food grade water hose to this three quarter inch port here. And at this point, there is no water pump needed. This is for pressurized water use only. It bypasses the fresh water tank. Make sure that you follow these instructions here for cleaning and uh, sanitizing the fresh water tank before usage. Your tank currently is empty at the moment. We have everything winterized. How we did the winterization process is we simply hooked up an air hose to this fitting here. We have the fresh water tank drained, leaving this valve open and this valve open. Once we're finished draining the tank, we simply shut off both of these valves. This one being that it dumps the fresh water out beneath the trailer. This one is for cutting the, the tank off so you don't damage the tank with air pressure. Once you have your air hose hooked up, you turn this valve on, open your hot water faucet on each side first getting all of the water out of the water heater and then follow the cold water side to get it out of the cold water lines. We have your water pump here getting six gallon water heater over in the corner on the driver's side. We have your battery for your 12 volt lighting system and water pump, fuse panel for the 12 volt lighting and water pump and your battery charging system. As long as you're continuously plugged into the plug like you see here you are charging the battery when you're providing power through the electric panel. 
we have our 100 amp electric panel, all 20 amp independent circuits. Everything is in the on position currently. The water heater is not plugged in because it would burn up the element. We're going to go ahead and open up the concession window. Open both sides of the window. Raise your flip up door open. Press upward for the flip out counter. We'll go ahead and turn on the light switches. This switch being your hood switch itself. We'll go ahead and turn on the refrigeration system. As far as the AC and heat unit. We have the fire suppression tank located here beside the fridge above the drain board of the sink itself. Three band sink, drain boards on each side. And your hand washing. Your water pump switch is located here. Make sure it's always off when not using a water pump. Show electricity to the plug up in the Venos itself. And you do have your upper shelf with the lip. So before you ever plug your water heater in, and you have your fresh water tank full, you want to make sure that you come inside. And if you're using the fresh water tank, you would turn this switch on. I'm going to turn it back off only because the pump would be running dry. You will open the hot water faucet, but then this is before you ever plug the water heater in. You're going to have air coming out of the faucet first. When you have a continuous stream of water, make sure that you turn the hot water side back off and then go to this faucet. Do this at least twice on both fixtures with continuous water flow coming out before you ever plug the water heater in. Once you have continuous water flow, then you can simply plug the water heater in and allow it time to heat up. We have your fire uh, suppression control head here located right next to your entry door. This system is live and armed. You do need to follow the instructions that will be uh, posted right below it on the wall. Uh, when you get back to your local state, Contact a fire suppression company, have them come out and tag and certify the system, and then follow, with, follow through with the fire marshal for them to come out and do their testing. We have indication that plug is working here. That plug is working. We went ahead and put all the paperwork for your refrigeration unit and the cooking equipment in the fridge itself. So you have your paperwork for your deep fryer, your griddle, fire suppression system, water pump, the fridge itself, um, and the four burner stove. We have the commercial grease hood located here. These filters are removable and easy to clean. You'll simply do so with hot water and a mild degreaser. Make sure that you allow ample time for them to air dry before using again. Behind the red piece of paper is the drip cup for the grease that will simply hook into the dial pins located here. This tray is at an angle for the grease to flow down out of the filters that does not get collected. Make sure you monitor this grease cup because your deep fryer is right below. Do not want any fires to happen. Control head for the fire suppression system, I mean control valve for the fire suppression system located under the griddle. You have your four burner 
stove with oven, one rack, five different positions, grease tray, grease tray as well. Always make sure that these are in the off position before you ever put propane into the trailer. Always make sure they're in the off position before you shut down the trailer also. Let's go ahead and show you a couple more plugs on the outside. Five foot porch area with your rear removable railing. Always make sure that you have a pin in the railing on both sides, at least the top side to protect it. Or you can have top and bottom to make sure that you do not lose this railing in transport. You have roller reels here on the rear of the trailer to protect the scissor jacks. These scissor jacks can be let down with a three quarter inch socket and an impact gun. Make sure you do it in equal increments, not trying to lift the whole trailer by one jack itself. You do have your exterior LED lights above the concession window and your exterior LED lights here on each rear corner. We're gonna make sure, again, everything's in the off position, burner-wise. We are going to turn the hood system on by this switch here. Now we can go ahead and put gas into the trailer and demonstrate how to operate the equipment. You have the same tank set up. You'll turn the gas valve on for the tank itself, pressurizing the line to the shutoff valve. Once you turn this line or turn this valve on, turn it on slowly, listening for any gas flow coming through this regulator. Again, we know that everything is off in the inside, but if we turn this on and we hear gas coming through this regulator, that would indicate maybe a break in the system. So definitely monitor that, listen for gas to come through. If you smell any excessive gas, immediately shut the system down. By doing so, turning the handle in the opposite position of the pipe. We are live with gas at this moment. Let's go ahead and fire the equipment up. You will need a lighter like this for lighting purposes. Each burner has its own pilot that is open. It is a very small amount of gas that comes through the system. It is so small that you will not hear it or smell it with the hood system on or when you turn the gas on itself. Now you see there's metal wire. We use belling wire to strap the burners in place so that they do not bounce out in transport reasons. Eventually this wire will break due to excessive heat. Simply get some more bailing wire from your local hardware store and replace. That is how you properly light the burners on the oven itself. When you're finished make sure that you do turn the burners back to the off position. For lighting the oven, you will have to crawl down on the floor, unfortunately, for this to happen. You will press the pilot button in, and you will push on this button here. See it lit? Let's see here.
There we go. So I've got the pallet lit. I was still holding the button in the whole time. Once you can let off and your pilot light stays lit, you are good to operate the oven itself. I'm leaving this flap open so you can see demonstrational that it is working. Again, that was for demonstrational purposes. Make sure that you close the lid once you are finished. And when you're not using the oven, turn it back off. I'm going to light the griddle. Sometimes it does take a moment for the pilot to stay or get lit due to the air that's in the, the line itself. I'm trying to hold the camera. We'll come back to that in a moment. It needs to get need to get the air pushed through the line. I'll go ahead and do the deep fryer in the meantime. Deep fryer, take this to the off position. You'll press in and turn well you'll turn the pilot button to where the L meets the red dot. Once that L meets the red dot, you will push in the pilot button itself. We're going to be lighting this uh, orifice here, and we'll see you in just a moment. With our pilot light lit now, again, I'm still holding the pilot button in place. We'll wait approximately 10 to 15 seconds. That way it, the thermocoupler is good and hot. Let off the button, my pilot light is lit. I will turn to the on position. And then I'll be able to activate my burners itself. Once you're done using the deep fryer, make sure you turn this back to the off position. Make sure that you turn the pilot button back to the off position as well. I'm going to go ahead and try this griddle again. Once you have your pot light lit, I don't know if I can show it through the camera. Once you're finished, make sure that that is turned back to the off position. I'm going to go ahead and go through shutdown procedure. First turn the line valve off, then turn your tank off. Always do so whether you're closing your business or uh, fixing to go into transport. 
Also make sure that your pin is in the cage provided and your tank is strapped in place. Uh, never transport the trailer without both of those in place as well as the tank in the off position. With that being done, we're going to go ahead and shut down the refrigeration. We're going to make sure the AC unit is off. We're going to make sure the water pump is in the off position. We're going to go ahead and cut the hood system off. Turn the interior and exterior lights off. Make sure we shut the door down. Press upward for the flip up counter. It will lay down in place. And then close your flip up door. You will latch on both sides. I was just latching or for one side for the video purposes. You unplug your power cord. This key will need to hang on your faucet or door keys so you don't lose it while in operation. Also make sure your lug nuts are always tight. Make sure your scissor jacks are raised up to the highest position. Make sure your tail lights are all functioning. Turn signals, brake lights, running lights. Make sure that the cap for the waste tank is back in place. And make sure your generator is positioned safely back into the box and locked up. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. Please feel free to give us a call at any time. We'll be glad to assist you in your needs. Use this video as instructional purposes. Uh, just make sure you have a safe operation. And we thank you for your business.